In these notes we'll be talking about the Aztecs, another civilization in Latin America. Is a story wrapped in myth and legend. How did a tribe of wandering nomads engineer the America's greatest empire in just 200 years? They had to devise engineering systems which were extraordinary for their age. Their civilization rivaled Rome in its sophistication. The Aztecs had the best technology that could be produced in the conditions of which they live. Aqueducts, palaces, pyramids, and temples stood as a tribute to their gods and a testament to the power of humankind. The Aztecs' crowning achievement was a gleaming capital city that astonished European explorers called the Venice of the New World. The city spread out glittering against its canals and its lake, bedecked with fine trees and beautiful mansions. Their thirst for power and blood set them on a course for destruction. When it finally came, their annihilation would be swifter and more complete than the world had ever known. The Aztecs, like most people, had legends to explain their origins. Here is the legend of how they ended up living on an island. While they were living in the swamps, an Aztec priest received a vision. In this vision, the Aztec god, Hutzilopochtli, told them to look for a place, to settle where they saw an eagle perched on a cactus, eating a snake. The Aztecs found this sign on a small reed-covered island in the middle of a shallow lake. There they started building their capital city, Tenochtitlan in 1325. That, of course, is merely a story they told to make it sound as if the island was truly where they wanted to live. The truth was none of the other tribes in Mexico would let the Aztecs settle near them because they were horribly violent. This next video clip explains it better than I ever could. Pay attention, this is crazy. Thirteen twenty-five A.D. Central Mexico, near modern-day Mexico City. A young girl, just a teenager, is celebrating her impending wedding. She is the daughter of a tribal king, and she is about to join a new tribe that has been a guest of her kingdom. That tribe is now known as the Aztecs. As part of the ritual, five Aztec noblemen lead her to an ancient temple for the ceremony. But as she reaches the top, the noblemen suddenly veer her away from the altar and onto a slab of stone in front of the temple, one used for sacrifice. Each man holds a limb, while a fifth lifts an obsidian knife high in the air. With one searing move, he slashes it through her chest and extracts her still beating heart. That evening, the king is invited to a ceremony to celebrate the marriage. Instead, he finds a priest performing a dance, wearing the still glistening skin of his daughter. As part of the ritual, the Aztecs had flayed her to honor the god of fertility. He saw this, and it was absolutely horrified at what he saw, his dear daughter. And so he and his forces immediately chased the, the Aztecs into the lake and onto this island where they sought refuge. The marshy island was an unwelcoming place. Yet it was from here that the Aztecs would beat the odds against them and forge the most powerful empire of the Americas. So, let's learn more about this very strange tribe. We will begin by exploring the geography.
This map shows the three major tribes of the Americas. You should know, now that the green one is the Mayan civilization. This red on here, in what is today Mexico, is the Aztec Empire. The Aztecs built their empire around their main city, Tenochtitlan. AD, the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan emerged as the greatest city in the New World. Surrounded by a watery moat three to five miles wide, the city was safe from attack. To overcome a lack of farmland, the Aztecs built ingenious artificial islands called Chinampas. What you do is you take earth from the bottom of the lake and you start putting it on top so to make a sort of artificial island, which you fix by planting large trees to, uh, as to form a rectangle. Once you are above the level of the water, you have a very stable environment, very humid. Uh, and uh, you can grow up to three crops a year, and you get the high productivity. Secure from attack and well provided with food, the Aztecs flourished. By the year 1500, the city had grown to five square miles and was home to as many as 200,000. Tenochtitlan was one of the largest cities in the world at the time, four times the size of London. At the heart of the city was a towering pyramid, 200 feet high, topped by twin temples, one for the god of the sun and war, the other for the god of rain. Around the temple plaza were the dwellings of the emperor, nobility, and priests. They lived in airy, multi-storied palaces of brightly painted stucco, some with as many as 50 rooms. The Aztecs' use of technology was due to their harsh geography. They used technology to adapt. The island they built on wasn't large enough to support a growing population and provide farmland for them. So, the Aztecs made their own bits of land called Chinampas. Using rows of trees as walls they would make rectangular blocks in the lake and then fill them up with mud. They would sort of weave it all together with grass and plants and in the end would end up with what has been called a floating garden. It is really quite amazing. An army marches on its stomach. So said Napoleon. Now, an ample food supply for civilians is a no-brainer in the critical development of any civilization. But the Aztecs perfected a unique method, not only to provide a substantial food supply for its civilian populace, but to fuel the military expansion of its empire. This revolutionary engineering was called Chinampas, a system that allowed them to literally create new land to farm and to live on. If you're going to have a city of any size, you have to provide room for them. And so what they did was build up these chinampas in the lake bed. Basically, a chinampa is an artificial island built in the lake. They look like narrow football fields, about 300 feet long by about 30 feet wide. A chinampa was built by weaving a web of sticks floating in the water and piling reeds on top of them. Mud was then scraped from the lake bottom and piled atop the reeds to form the chinampa. It took four to six men eight days to build the average chinampa. They were connected to the city by massive navigational canals that would take thousands of men months to build. A chinampa like this one could produce up to seven crops a year, whereas a farm on the mainland could yield one, maybe two, maybe three at the most. As a crop was ready to harvest on a chinampa, seedlings from another would be sprouting out of mud that would be spread on a boat adjacent to the chinampa. Then when the seedlings were ready, they'd be transported to the chinampa, and this cycle would be repeated over and over and over again on hundreds and then thousands of chinampas.